I don't know why, but I woke up at quarter to six and just didn't sleep after that. I don't know why. And then I went to check my sleep score and my ring tracked how long I slept, um, but it died during the night, so I don't have a sleep score today. The one day I feel more in routine, I don't have a sleep score. But yeah, woke up before six and I just, laid down actually that's a lie i checked emails which was so bad that's probably why i didn't fall back asleep i shouldn't have done that good morning you guys morning routine if you're not oil pulling it's something i would definitely recommend that you start i'll put an article in the description box that it can explain the benefits but i restarted this my mom has been doing this my whole life and i did this all the time when i was a teenager and i restarted a few months ago basically you swish coconut oil around your mouth for several minutes and then the oil helps pull bacteria from between your teeth and off through your mouth and your tongue. You do it before you brush your teeth. Um, you could do it before tongue scraping, so like oil pulling, tongue scraping, brush your teeth for oral hygiene. The article will explain it better than I can, especially right now. It's amazing. You will notice a difference in how clean and fresh your mouth feels. It also helps whiten your teeth, apparently. I don't feel like I've noticed a ton of whitening benefits from the oil. People say it helps whiten. Just make sure you don't spit it out into the sink. You need to spit it out into the trash. He's probably the least food motivated golden retriever you've ever met, which did make him harder to train when he was a puppy because he only will really respond to super high value treats. You can't train him with kibble or anything like that, but I'm just going to make his breakfast because he will eat it. It takes him a while, but he will eat it. That was the native pet bone broth, like chicken powder. Just gives the kibble a little extra flavor. We've experimented with so many different types of like food toppers, dry food, wet food, different brands. This is just a probiotic. All the things. We've tried countless different ways of feeding him. He just isn't a super food motivated dog. It's crazy. As my dad keeps reminding us, we would rather he be a picky eater and a slow eater than a dog who is always choking himself because he's like inhaling his food. Always hydrate his kibble with water and that helps mix the powders in there. And then a little, this is the native pet omega oil. Oh, what else do we have for you today, Fergus? And then we do a couple spoonfuls of a wet food. This is just like a turkey stew, turkey canned food. And you do that, we add a little bit of canned food to the top and then mix it around again, just to make him more interested in it. And it's not like the actual food. Like I swear we've tried literally everything that we've worked with, like our vet and everything, just not a crazy for food dog. And when was the last time you met a retriever that wasn't like crazy for food, right? And then we always, always do a tablespoon or two of pumpkin, like canned organic pumpkin for his digestion. And he is prone the diarrhea. <laughs> we always just do a little bit of canned pumpkin on top. Sometimes we don't, but like sometimes if we've done the pumpkin for a while, we can go some time without it, but inevitably we always come back to the pumpkin. Also, he just loves it. He'll come and eat the pumpkin off the top and then he, it'll take another hour to get to the breakfast. So, you come breakfast? You can tell he's not crazy food motivated just by the fact he's not hanging on me while I'm making his breakfast. Like I'm having to call him over to come eat breakfast. Sit. Good boy. Get you 
some water. Oh, now you're ready to go potty. Okay. In a future lifetime, I'd love to experiment with a totally raw homemade diet for Fergus. But I think, I don't think I'm in a place to commit to that at the moment. I would love to do it for him one day though. I think he would like that. freezing in the morning and then it gets warm in the afternoon and then it's freezing again at night so I just never know how to dress. Something I've been doing a lot lately that I love, it's such a game changer, is habit stacking ice rolling with meditation in the morning. And I like to do it pretty soon after waking up. I just feel like it's such a calm way to start the day and it leaves me feeling really alert but it's still calming. I feel kind of out of it this morning to be honest. I use a couple of different meditation techniques. I mainly use Headspace, but I was looking at my Spotify this morning and I had a random financial well-being meditation thing pop up by Comfort Affirmations. I've never listened to these people before. I don't even know who's behind this Spotify account. Seems promising. If I don't like it, I'm just gonna switch to Headspace, but. I don't like the background music. I can't relax to that, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never let go of control a day in my life. And we do not control the unfolding of events. Life becomes lighter, more enjoyable. We don't control what thoughts arise in the mind. We have the opportunity to step in and to let go of the thoughts that are harmful or unproductive in some way. But we can't prevent thoughts from arising in the mind. The contact between the body and the seat or the floor beneath you. Just allowing the sounds to come and go. And as you sit there, inevitably the, the mind will wander, but just bringing the attention back to the body. And every time the mind wanders off, realizing it's wandered. Just coming back to that movement of the breath. I just finished that. The app gives me a quote every time I finish meditation. Today it says, Once we realize that we do not control the unfolding of events, life becomes lighter, more enjoyable. Both body and mind are at ease. Love that. Okay, now I feel like I'm kind of going out of order, you guys. I also feel like this is the first time I'm sitting down and actually speaking to you guys. Not on my list, but something I just remembered is Duolingo. Sometimes I do it before I even get out of bed. Sometimes I do it around this stage of the morning, so I'm gonna do that. 66 day streak. Ha, me. Crook. Ha, callum, ronach. Gra. Ha, me, ski, agus, crosta. Ooh, I don't like when you have to type in the other language. That's where I always get, that's where I always make mistakes because I make so many spelling errors, especially when there's accent marks. I'm very bad at remembering where accent marks go. Lesson complete. We love to see it. So I listen to wordless music more than I listen to music with words. I like lo-fi, instrumental music, instrumental covers of things. And I find that I go through phases with it, but the phase of life I'm in right now, I don't wanna hear words. I don't want anybody talking to me. I don't want anybody singing to me. 
Like if I'm in the mood to listen to a certain artist or if I'm working out or something, then yeah, I will listen. Although sometimes I work out to lo-fi music. And I find that I just go through phases. There are times in my life where, I don't know, like I wanna listen to podcasts all day, every day. I wanna listen to audiobooks. I want to be talked to, I wanna process words. And sometimes it just feels so overwhelming and I, I don't want to. I'm in one of those phases right now where it's lo-fi narrating my entire life. I don't know what it is, this time last year, I remember because Matt had moved away, because we were doing long distance, I wasn't hearing another person's voice very often, and so I was listening to podcasts and audiobooks nonstop all day in order to fill the silence. And I think now I'm just, I'm in a very anxious time in my life. My anxiety's been borderline unmanageable lately, and I just, I can't, please don't talk to me. Please don't ask me to process words. I can't do it. I can't do it. And it's interesting because in this moment, I don't feel anxious. Like sitting here right now, talking to you guys as I'm about to make the bed, I don't feel anxious, but I just don't want to be talked to. Somehow listening to songs with words feels like somebody talking to me at times. That's good enough. Okay, now I'm gonna do my supplements and my meds and everything, which I take very seriously. So I take for medication, birth control, obviously. I'm on 150 milligrams of Lamotrigin, also called Lamictal. This is my mood stabilizer because I'm bipolar. Yum. A lot of bipolar people have to take an antidepressant with their mood stabilizer. I think you are meant to. I have just tried so many. I have an entire podcast episode about all the different medications I've tried that have failed me <laughs> or have made me worse. And my psychiatrist and I have been working together for over three years, I think. And in that time, we've tried so many antidepressants. And we've just come to the conclusion mutually that for whatever reason, antidepressants just don't work on me. I've tried so many different types. I've tried SSRIs, SNRIs. You know, I've tried so many different ones and none of them make things better even when i give them like eight weeks 12 weeks to kick in i don't know so i just take a mood stabilizer i feel like that's different from what a lot of bipolar people have to take i don't know what it is about my body chemistry that just rejects so many different antidepressants maybe one day i'll find one that works i remember when i first started i was on trintelix and that worked so well but my insurance does not cover it and it's massively expensive and i've just never tried one otherwise that that works as well as trintelix used to so I'm on my mood stabilizer. It's too early in the day to tell if I'm gonna need anxiety medication. I have 0.25 milligrams of Xanax if I need it. I only take that as needed though, so I'm gonna try to avoid. I try to manage anxiety with my lifestyle as best I can. This is just my birth control. I try to manage it through lifestyle and supplements. Um, I am very pro pharmaceutical medication for mental health and I'm pro holistic health and lifestyle changes. I know that I need prescription medication for some parts of my mental health. And I know that I can make a difference to other parts of my mental health through more um, holistic practices. So I'm very pro both. This is a pro both space. Anyway, that takes care of the meds. For supplements, I take a lot of supplements and it changes day to day. So I don't take the exact same list of supplements every single day. There's ones I take all the time, but I tend to change it up depending on what my body needs at that moment. So for example, today I'm taking vitamin C. This is my favorite vitamin C ever. It's from, whoop, it's from Symbiotica. And I'm also taking zinc because my immune system has a really hard time with this time of year. I'm also taking allergy relief pills. This is not a supplement, but it's just critical. Then I do take a probiotic every single day. This is my favorite one. It's shelf stable from JS Health. I don't even know how many of these bottles I've gone through. It's been a lot. Another one I take most of the time is fish oil. Also JS Health for mental well-being, skin, and joints. Fergus gets his fish oil in the morning and I get mine. I got into fish oil a long time ago because it's good for your skin. And if you didn't know, I sometimes struggle with eczema and dermatitis and sometimes even psoriasis, like triple whammy, right? And fish oil is good for that. Ah, okay. Yum. A couple of times I posted about my supplements on my Instagram story, and I always have people ask like, how can you swallow all the pills? 
because I did this one at a time just to talk through them with you guys, but I could take all of these at once and it would be no problem. My answer to that is I grew up with a extremely health conscious, holistic health, vegan, hippie mom, and we would always have like a pile of supplements, like genuinely an entire palm full of supplements and vitamins to take with dinner every night. It would be like eight to 10 supplements every single night. So I just got used to swallowing pills and things from a very young age and it doesn't bother me anymore. Okay, I've got my favorite workout set on right now. It's from 437. I love the color, but also they make the best workout jackets. Best that I've tried so far anyway. Look at this. Oh, I'm obsessed. They are comfy, but just so, so cute. So I just love them so much. I'm gonna take this off because I need to do deodorant. I've talked to you guys before about the fear I have, like the actual phobia of smelling bad to other people. So I'm a deodorant and perfume girly. You guys know this. For every day, this is my fave, it's called Evolve together. This was in my February favorites reel. This is a natural deodorant though. And for the gym, I usually do this one. Good old Old Spice. Just cause I sweat a lot. I want like, I want that aluminum when I'm going to the gym. And then I do wear perfume to the gym. Today I'm gonna do Salt by Alice Brooklyn, which brings me to something very exciting. I am genuinely so, so excited to tell you guys that this video is sponsored by Alice Brooklyn. If you've been following me for a while, you know this is a big deal to me because I am a Alice Brooklyn fan. This is my Alice Brooklyn collection. All of them are stunning. You've probably seen me use Apre about a zillion times. I don't know if you can tell that it is literally less than half empty. I feel like for a perfume, you guys know how much I love perfume. I take perfume seriously and I don't have a signature scent. I wear whatever I feel like that day. So the fact that this is half empty for me just shows you how much I love this brand. I think I'm actually not gonna do salt. I'm gonna do Apple Love. Gorgeous deep red packaging. It smells so good. First of all, the packaging is stunning. They're beautiful bottles with beautiful colors that coordinate to the scents and the scent profiles. They look great in your like perfume display. All the fragrances that I'm showing you are PETA certified, cruelty free and vegan. And also this cap is cool. It's got a magnetic closure. You hear the way it's clicking into place? Which is nice because as you guys know, I travel a lot. So having a magnetic closure means I know it's not gonna pop open in my bag. It's not gonna like spray everywhere. And today, March 21st, is actually National Fragrance Day. So what better time to talk about it? And I'm gonna share my favorite perfumes from Ellis Brooklyn and their scent profiles. If you're looking for, looking for a little treat, looking to add to your collection. This gorgeous red bottle is home to Apple Love, which the brand describes as a love letter to New York City. It's appley, but not too appley. It's an amber gourmand. It has vanilla, praline, sandalwood, mandarin plum blossom apple of course peach sugarcane musk i'll put all the notes for all these perfumes on the screen so you can see but it is a gorgeous fruity but still musky scent i really like this one it pairs so well with other fragrances too another favorite this is a famous one you've probably seen this one is myth literally such gorgeous packaging this is a big favorite of mine myth is the first perfume that alice brooklyn made and it's sexy it's a sexy skin scent think bergamot patchouli musk cedarwood that type of scent i love a good skin scent Salt is a summer it girl. I think this is gonna be one of my favorite perfumes this summer. It smells like a sexy day at the beach. It literally smells like being on the beach and it's hot and you've got all of your sun products on and there's salt in the air and you're with someone you love. Like that's what salt smells like. However, it does not smell like sunscreen. It smells like a beachy day and all of that entails, but it doesn't have a sunscreen note. So somehow, it literally reminds you of the beach without that note. Like I said, I think this is gonna be a major perfume for me this summer, along with Sunfruit, which is also a warm weather it girl. I love the bright, bright, like chartreuse yellow packaging. This is a fun one. It's a fruity floral, very summery, but not childish, not immature, if that makes sense. It smells like a flower garden in the heat of summer, but not too intoxicating. It has fig, coconut, orange blossom, vanilla, but also that musk to balance it out. You guys know how much I love a musk. If salt is the day at the beach, sunfruit is when you come back from the beach and you're a little bit sunburnt and you take your everything shower and then you go to dinner with your hair still wet. That's this girl. These are the other two in my collection, Apre, and then this is a body mist actually and it's peaches. I think this one is new. 
These are the other two that I have and they're gorgeous. So if any of these scent profiles sounded intriguing to you, I do have a code. It's Mary10 and I'll put a link in the description box along with more info about the perfumes. You guys have seen me use and love Ellis Brooklyn for such a long time. I'm genuinely a huge fan of the brand. So I'm very excited that we're partnering together for this. I'll put all the info in the description box. Mary10, celebrate National Fragrance Day with a little something for yourself. If any of these sounded good or if you're a perfume girl just like me, I can't recommend this brand enough. So thank you, Ellis Brooklyn, for sponsoring this part of the video. And I need to stop procrastinating. I need to go to the gym now. Okay, I forgot to show you guys my pre-workout snack, but I like a banana before I work out. Like I said, I don't like to eat a lot in the early morning, even though it's mid-morning now. Filming this takes a lot longer than just doing my morning routine. <laughs> I don't wanna like mislead anybody. It's not early morning anymore. But yeah, I love a banana before the gym and then I just eat like a big meal afterwards. Make my electrolytes because I will be going to the sauna. a weight training workout part of me just wants to do a really long walk and then go use the gym amenities i'm not in the mood for weight training today i think today is more of a long walk day i said this on a podcast but my therapist recently recommended bilateral movement to manage my anxiety and there's different ways you can do that i think this is a technique they use in emdr but i'm not 100 percent sure but basically it's just activating both sides of your body at once so you can do it with like listening to music that alternates sides, tapping on different sides, eye movement. Um, but she recommended bilateral movement because she knows I like to work out. So that means, I mean, it can mean a lot of things, but for me, she was like, you haven't been taking your walks lately. Get back into your walks. It activates both sides. And she's right. It always calms my anxiety. So today might be a long walk day and then I go to the gym. When I was cleaning out my closet in that video that I made for you guys, I rediscovered this 437 duffel bag that I have. It matches my workout set. So this is what I'm using today. I've got my sweat set, my swimsuit. I've already shown you guys this, but just my little bag with a couple products for when I finish working out. Like if I was gonna shower there. Oh, but see then if I take a gym bag, then I have to carry it on my walk. Someone just got back from his walk and he's excited. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Ow, no. Were you a good boy? <gasps> Were you a good boy? Yeah, I was very well behaved. Good for you. Good for you, little boy. Do you ever just feel jealous of the life that your dog has? Because I know I do. You're such a Oh my god, look at your big smile. You are the best boy. Oh. He got his nose in everyone's business, and by that I just mean everyone's gardens. Oh boy. Both excited. Good boy. Okay, just kidding, I'm gonna do 12 through 30 instead. I took one look at the Stairmaster and I was like, <sighs> not today. I'm gonna do 12 through 30 and then maybe just a little bit of weights. When I do 12 through 30 or when I walk on the treadmill at all, I kind of start the incline in increments. So I warm up on incline five and then I go to like eight and then I do 12. When I'm really ambitious, I'll do 15 if the treadmill has it, but yeah. And I almost always am on speed three and then if i'm like trying to get a good sweat going like really trying to get a workout in i'll go to four but i have long legs i'm five foot nine so adjust your speed depending on your leg length Normally I would never film in here, but I'm alone in the sauna today, which is actually really nice. It's so hot. It's, I think it's 190 degrees, 180, 190. You guys know I've been really into sauna lately and I've decided I need one in my future home. I know you can buy like one person, two person saunas for a home and I need one. And I actually want to get one for my parents and I'm making that a new life goal right now is like to be able to get my parents a sauna because I just know they love it so much. It's especially nice in the winter. I like the winter, but there is something nice about feeling warmth go down to your bones 
in the dead of winter. We actually had such a nice weekend because it was 70 and 75 degrees this weekend and I saw the cherry blossoms. The cherry blossoms are one of my favorite parts of living in this area. I've gone every year for four years and I just experienced my last cherry blossoms while living here, which was really emotional. So yeah, the weekend was beautiful and then it just went straight back to being cold, which I like. You guys know I like it, but there is something about the first 75 degree day of the year. Something about the first time you wear like a tank top, the first time you just lay out in the sun and feel it warm your skin, it's really nice. I've noticed in my time in Scotland that a lot of houses have solariums, which makes total sense because if you have rainy weather or weather that tends to be cold or windy, it totally makes sense why you'd want to get outside time however you can. So I hope our future home has a solarium as well because I think kind of necessary if you want to enjoy being outside no matter what the weather is. I usually spend my time in the sauna laying down on a bench on a towel if I can. I often meditate in here. Um, I might meditate again. Sometimes I bring my phone in, not always because obviously it's so hot that your phone stops working, but I never stay in here for longer than 10 or 15 minutes because at that point that's as much as I can stand. And I don't think you're meant to stay in for more than 15 minutes, but I just like it a lot in here. It's very peaceful. I feel like it encourages me to think and reflect. I've done a lot of soul searching in this sauna. Maybe that sounds funny to say, but I really have. Like I've gotten into the sauna before and decided like this is my time to just work through things in my head and connect with myself and I really enjoy it. I think it's really good for me. And then I try to go straight from this into the cold lunge, which is much less fun in the moment, much less pleasant, but still good. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. I know it's so good for me, but I hate it so much. I don't want to get any further than this. My hips are barely submerged. I don't want to get any lower. I always end in the hot tub when I can, as a little treat. I'm gonna get a protein smoothie also as a little treat. I sat in one of the lounge chairs. I hope you can hear me. I sat in one of the lounge chairs for a little bit and I just sent off some texts and emails for things that needed like, you know, Monday morning attention. And I'll do more of that when I get back. But I know better than to check emails first thing in the morning, like first thing when I wake up. I know better than that. But I did it this morning and so I just felt like I had to, had to fire a few off. I'm a lucky girl. If you don't listen to Peyton's podcast, it's one of the first podcasts I ever listened to with her. See, I haven't seen Peyton since she moved away from DC, but I think she's coming back for some of her boyfriend's games. Yeah, lucky girl. I can't wait to see her again, actually. It's been a while. Give it a listen. I forgot to bring extra socks, so I had to put my sweaty socks back on. I'm gonna shower when I get home anyway, so it's fine, but I, I did not like that. It's a different day, completely different day, as you can tell probably because my nails are different. When I finished with the gym before, I got back and realized I had to get into a meeting quickly, so I just stopped filming that morning, but I've gotten back from a yoga class, so I'm in a similar part of my routine as I was when I stopped filming last time, if that makes sense. On my way home, I stopped and I got a cherry blossom latte from Compass Coffee, and it was so gross, but I washed out my cup and there's a poppy in it now because I feel like little drinks do taste better in a coffee shop cup. That's girl logic. Anyway, we're just picking right back up. I gotta take a shower, and I thought I would show you guys this new exfoliating glove I got. I saw this reel saying if you've never tried a Korean exfoliating mitt, then you don't know what you're missing. So I got one off of Amazon, and I'm gonna fake tan today, so I just thought I'd give myself a once over. So I'm gonna try this. Only other thing I wanted to show you was my new favorite body wash. We have a Target Slay. This is the Frenchie brand, which is um, Ashley Tisdale's brand. And this is in the scent Palo Santo Sage. This is by far the best Frenchie scent I've ever, ever tried. And I've tried a lot of the stuff from this line because I really like it. This scent is unbelievable. It smells so expensive, so luxe, so clean, so 
high-end, like a really fancy hotel spa. I have the perfume and like the body spray. I have the lotion. It's so good. Oh my God. Yeah, this is the only thing that's different in that routine. And I'm not gonna wash my hair because it's not dirty. I didn't sweat at all on yoga this morning, but I am gonna put it up. I need this to last till tomorrow night. That mitt was insane. I can't believe I have any skin left. It felt like I was being rubbed with steel wool but in like a good way. <laughs> Love that, Korean exfoliating mitt, so good. Also, I've clearly put on my fake tan, I'm gonna marinate. Last thing I wanted to show you guys, cause this is something that I do every day, is my journaling, planning, etc. routine. I know I've talked about it before, I think I've shown it before, but it's just something else that I do every morning, or at least like six times a week. So I'm gonna show you guys that as the last thing I think in this, this wholesome morning. So there's a lot going on here, obviously. <laughs> we have some gorgeous direct sunbeams that are making the light beautiful, but extremely harsh. So welcome to my notebook and notepad collection. This might seem over the top to some people. You would be totally accurate in saying that. However, I'm mentally ill. I use all of these all the time. I'll just quickly run you through everything is from this notepad is my to-do list. It's from Papier, this is from Papier, and this is from Papier. This is my regular journal where I write about what I'm thinking and feeling and things I'm going through. This is a daily planner, obviously to-do list. This is my manifestation journal and where I write all of my gratitude lists. The brand is Waverly Scotland. And this is just a random notepad from Walmart that I use for work. So I use this to jot down, I'm not gonna show you. I use this to jot down meeting notes, ideas, concepts, things like that. Look how long these shadows look. Ooh. So I'm gonna show you what I do here as if it was the start of a new week because I started filming this video on a Monday. So I'm gonna show you what my Monday routine would be. There is a Mary Skinner method to the madness here. And it starts with a regular journal. I actually have an entire podcast episode where I talk about my routine really, really in depth. So I will link that in the description box if you're interested. The Mary Skinner routine starts with the journal. We're starting here because in order to, I think, call in the best things possible for life, in order to really make gratitude work for you and in order to call in manifestations and like allow room for manifestations in your life you have to first get out all of the bad shit i want to approach the rest of this routine especially my manifestations from a clear-headed happy positive headspace and i can't do that if there's things in my life that are bothering me i can't do that if i'm being weighed down by things if i'm anxious if i'm overthinking i'm ruminating on something i really believe that the best way to approach manifestation is with as clear of a head as possible and for me the way i clear my head is through this you have to raise your vibration so if journaling isn't the way that you raise your vibration that's fine you can do something else you could listen to music, you could work out, you could, I don't know, eat your favorite food, dance around your house, just something to like get any negative energy out and bring, bring your vibe up. Rather than journal in front of you, I'm just gonna write down a list of journal prompts that I hope will be helpful in your own journaling practice. These are the prompts I wrote down. I've journaled with all of these prompts before. Some of them are inspired by what I talk about in therapy or things my, my therapist has told me I should journal about. So these are just jumping off points. And in my podcast episode, I talk about how important free writing is if you're new to journaling. And free writing is just forcing yourself to write without stopping until the ideas flow. So if you don't know what to write, it could look like writing I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write over and over and over again until the words start flowing. And I think journal prompts are helpful if you're not used to journaling or if you just need something to help remove that like emotional dam to let the feelings come out. So if you want a prompt, here are some good ones I think. I've had to switch to holding the camera because the shadows are so intense and crazy and my tripod was showing up. So now we gratitude journal. We've gotten out all of the bad shit. We have released all the negative emotions. We have allowed ourselves to process 
and let go of different things. Now that we've gotten all the bad shit out of our heads, or you know, hopefully we've gotten some of the bad shit out of our heads, now we can reflect on what we're grateful for. So something that I'll do a lot is I'll write my gratitude down on the left half of the page and then my manifestations down on the right half of the page. This is the worst room to be filming this in right now because the sun is so crazy, but it's the room we have. So with gratitude, again, if you're not used to it, it can feel awkward at first or you can have a hard time thinking of things at first. I truly believe that gratitude is one of the foundations to contentment in your life. And I say that as someone with severe mental health issues, Gratitude doesn't fix everything obviously, but like I talked to you guys earlier about lifestyle changes and how that truly does help manage my mental health along with pharmaceuticals and therapy and these other things. I really mean it. I wouldn't tell you guys that if I didn't mean it. Like take it from somebody who has mentally gone to places like the Trust me, gratitude is truly, truly, truly one of the ultimate foundations to happiness and contentment in your life. But when you first start practicing gratitude, it can feel awkward because you can get bogged down in the negative and you can think, well, what do I have to be grateful for? And I know this because Matt and I recently started doing gratitude every night together. And I've done gratitude journaling for a long time, so I'm used to it. But Matt was new to the concept of like listing out things that you're grateful for and really reflecting on them and allowing that feeling of thankfulness to just wash over you. First couple of nights, he he had a hard time like he knows that he has a good life he knows that he has like blessings and these things but when it comes to verbalize that when it comes to examining your day and picking out each point and being able to just like yeah just verbalize what you're grateful for it can feel awkward at first but it gets so much better with practice the more you use the gratitude muscle the easier it becomes by the third or fourth night he was like not only looking forward to it every night and asking me if we could start doing it like earlier in the night but he was also listing off things like so quickly and that's how it works. This has been true for everyone I've talked to about this. If it feels awkward at first, I totally get that, but it gets a lot easier. I think the easiest way to do this is just in list format. So I write at the top, I am so grateful for, colon. And then I just list out the things that I'm grateful for. Okay, I just wrote out some things on my list. I'll keep going after I stop filming, but these are just a couple of quick things that came to mind. And some of these seem kind of niche like some of them seem small but that's the point like the more you do it the more you can pull smaller and smaller bits from your day out to be grateful for and that's what like helps the mindset so much and again i'm saying this as someone who is so aware that like gratefulness and mindset and attitude and perspective is not capable of fixing everything every single thing wrong mentally like trust me i know that but I wouldn't be telling you guys that this works. I wouldn't do it every single day if I didn't feel like it had a really positive impact on my life. So then after the gratitude, then I go into manifesting. I feel like I've talked about this a ton, so I'm gonna skip through it, but I write out, I receive the following with joy and gratitude. That's my favorite manifestation prompt. And then I just write out all the things that I'm manifesting. And then we have my planner. <laughs> this is the one I'm using currently. It's an undated planner. And for this, I just fill in all of the blanks. There's to-do list, habit tracking, priorities. You can plan out your meals and do a shopping list. I usually don't. And then each day there's just a daily schedule that you can fill out. And I'll go through my Google calendar and I'll look at everything in my decal, which I update all the time. I go through my Google calendar on my phone multiple times a day, all day, every day, making sure everything is written out properly and documented properly in Google calendar. And then every morning I go in, well, every Sunday, Monday or first thing Monday morning I go in and fill out like the weekly page of the planner and then at the top of every morning during the week I go in and I write out um, everything that needs to be done that day. I like doing it daily because then it helps me prioritize what needs to go on the to-do list for that day rather than writing out like a massive to-do list and looking at that constantly. I do do that like on my to-do list pad. I write out bigger items, but the benefit of having a daily to-do list that's a bit smaller is that I don't feel overwhelmed to get all of the bigger items done every single day because I know this is my big things to-do list and I pull from this to make my daily to-do list. And that about wraps it up. I hate that I'm ending the vlog looking like this because I just have fake tan all over my face, but I need to let this sit for a couple more hours before I rinse it off. So I'm just going to have to cap it off here. I hope you enjoyed spending a morning with me. Well, two mornings with me, but that is the routine. I really enjoyed it. It was fun to film a video that has like a really specific timeline and narrative to it. Cause usually my vlogs are just me like doing whatever during the week. So it was fun to show you guys like the really small and granular parts of my routine. I enjoyed it. Let me know if you liked this video and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Mm -hmm.